Hey Java developers, I know you like it when videos start fast and get to the point, and so do I. Which is also why I know you'll love the subject of this episode of the Inside Java Newscast, Project Widen. An open JDK project with the goals of improving startup time and time to peak performance for Java applications. One might even describe this project as attempting to capture lightning in a jar. Interested? Me too, so let's get started. So, some ground setting. Project Lightning is an OpenJDK project started in 2020 with the goals of improving startup time, time to peak performance, and reducing memory footprint. Right now, the Lightning team is primarily focusing on the first two goals, startup time and time to peak performance. These metrics have become more salient over the last 10 or so years as architectures like microservices and serverless have become more popular. Improving startup performance isn't new to the JVM. Indeed, the feature that Lighten is building on top of, Class Data Sharing, or CDS, traces its lineage all the way back to JDK 1.5. If you want an in-depth look on CDS, be sure to check out my Stackwalker video here. Now, don't burn the acronym CDS into your head too much as it's on its way out in favor of ahead of time, or AOT. Indeed, the class data and steering feature I just talked about is being retconned as AOT. See, retconning isn't just a thing for comic books or Star Wars, it's happening in programming as well. Anyways, CDS, I'm sorry, AOT, creates a pre-processed archive of the classes that JVM loads on startup. This archive can be used to start on subsequent startups, improving startup performance typically in the 20 to 30% range. Of course, that depends on the particulars of your application. More on that later. However, a key benefit of AOT is that outside the time it takes to create the archive, there is no other drawbacks. That is, no programming limitations, platform requirements, or anything of that nature. Maintaining this ease of use is a key goal with all Project Lighting features. On the topic of Lighting features, right now there are currently four JEPs in various states of readiness. There is JEP 483 ahead of time class loading and linking, which looks to be on the path for inclusion in JDK 24. Be sure to follow that JEP if you're interested. Then there are three other JEPs in draft status, ahead of time code compilation, ahead of time method profiling, and ahead of time GC agnostic arc object archiving. Links to all these JEPs are in the description. Let's start taking a closer look at these features and how you can start testing them out. Back in June of this year, the Lighting team started publishing their first early access EA build for ARM architecture Mac and 64-bit x86 Linux. For Windows users out there, there should be an EA build available in the near future as well. These builds are based on the Lighten pre-main EA branch, which itself is branched off the mainline JDK repo. This branch includes code for all the JEPs I mentioned before, as well as experimentation with other features that haven't reached draft JEP status yet. You can actually try all these features together with a single argument, cast data storage, and the name of the cast. This will start the application more or less as normal for what would be a training run. This would be used to not only see which classes are being loaded, linked, compiled, and so on, but also gather profiling information. So let's briefly cover the underlying reasoning for a training run. When you compile Java code, you aren't, you're not compiling it into the traditional sense of having a binary that, you can, that can be executed natively like you would with C++ or Rust, but instead transforming it into bytecode that can be read by the JVM. What can give applications running on the JVM comparable throughput to natively executed applications from languages like C++ or Rust is that the JVM has a JIT or just-in-time compiler. The JIT can dynamically optimize the code based on how the application is actually being executed through various methods, including simplification of control flows, method inline, compiling bytecode into native code, and more. However, this process can be somewhat expensive and, as mentioned, dynamic, so you wouldn't necessarily want to do it everywhere. So instead, the JVM would build up a profile of how code is being executed and use those profiles and its internal heuristics to determine how code should be optimized. Indeed, this process is how the Hotspot JVM, 
the JVM you're most likely using got its name as frequently invoked portions of the code are called hotspots. This process is why Java applications typically have a warm-up period, a time between application start and the application reaching its peak performance. Before it lied in all those work, the profiling, optimizations, and natively compiled code were all destroyed on JVM shutdown. The goal of Leiden is to save this work, put it into a cache, and allow the JVM to read from that cache to not only improve startup, but time to pre-performance, or in other words, time shifting this work from runtime to build time. Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. So I mentioned before that with the historical form of AOT, you'd see a 20 to 30% reduction in startup time, but exactly how much would depend upon the particulars of your application. Well, the same holds true with widened features as well. An application that is doing a lot of class loading or computationally heavily work would see more benefit than an application that is doing more IO work. The kind of work your application performs is, of course, largely out of control as it's a reflection of the business needs of that application. What you do have more control over is the training run aspect. To demonstrate this, I would be using the Spring Boot Pet Clinic application and the OHA tool for generating load. And a tip of the hat to Sebastian Del Luz for this as well, as well as the feedback he and the Spring team have already provided to the Leiden team. As mentioned in the previous section, to use all of Leiden's features, you need to only include the argument cast data store. You can optionally enable disable specific Leiden features. I won't be covering that here, but be sure to check out the README for the Leiden Premium branch, link in the description, on how to do this if interested. When executing a training run, it is important it accurately represents the work your application would be doing in production. Here in this demo, I started the Spring Boot Pet Clinic application with the cache data store argument set. With it started, I will now generate load against the application using the OHA tool. In this case, 30 seconds of load against the vets page. After the training run is completed, I shut down the JVM, which triggers the JVM to generate the AOT cache. Let's see the benefits of using an AOT cache with different scenarios. As a control, I executed 10 seconds of load against the pet clinic application with no AOT cache. Along the bottom axis is how much time in milliseconds it took the app to start using Spring Boot's self-reported numbers and the amount of requests processed in 10 seconds. As you can see, it took about 2.5 to 2.6 seconds to start and about 100,000 to a little over 120,000 of requests processed. Using a cache that's generated from only starting up the application, the amount of requests processed is about the same with one outlier, but the startup time is about 2350 milliseconds. Next, with a cache of 30 seconds of load, generally the startup time is about the same, again with one outlier. As mentioned, performance testing is difficult, but request process is about 140,000 to 160,000. Finally, looking at a cast from three minutes of load, the performance is roughly the same, so this demonstrates there will be a point of diminishing return for training runs. Though this is the early days of Leiden, and a lot of these numbers can and will change as the project matures. Okay, so this is where you come in. The Leiden team would like to hear from you. If you do have applications that can run on JDK24, see if you can try running builds of them against the Leiden branch with the Leiden features enabled. If you run into issues, errors, substandard performance, usability concerns, and more, let the Leiden team know. And the best place for that would be the Leiden dev mailing list. Link in the description and on screen. Leiden is an exciting project and I'm looking forward to hearing more about it over the coming weeks and months. If you'd like to learn more about Project Leiden, be sure to check out this video from Eoy Lam and Dan Heidinka from JVMLS, and also this video from Sebastian Del Luz from Spring.io. If you have any comments or questions about Project Leiden, please share them. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like this video, still hit the like button, but maybe share this video with an enemy. If you suffered, why not them as well? Well, that's it for this episode of the Inside Java Newscast. Until next time, happy coding!